Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the second video in a two-part series where I'm creating a method for adding a login screen to your app and being able to manage the presentation of the correct view based on the status of your login authentication without using either a navigation stack or a modal sheet. In the first video, we created our authentication flow, and in this episode, we're going to be exploring biometric authentication with face and touch ID along with securely encrypting and storing your credentials in the keychain. Before I get started, please leave a comment below if you enjoy the video. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Make sure you ring the bell to be notified of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. If this is something you want to learn, then keep watching. If you've been following along and completed the first video in this series, you can use your completed project from that video and continue on from there. If you didn't watch that first video, you can download the completed project from the link in the notes below. I won't be going into much detail of the flow that was created in that video, so if you get confused, I suggest you go back and at least fast watch that video so you'll understand the authentication flow and be able to follow what we do in this video. This is a test app and I have a mock API service that simulates logging into an external server using this API. All I'm doing is delaying for a period of time and then checking to see if the password entered is the word password. If it is, the result argument in the completion handler is a success, and if not, it issues an error of type invalid credentials. If it's successful, the authentication class's isValidated property is set to true, and this class is injected into the environment so we get the content view presented. If not, an error property is set and issues an alert to the user. So here it is in action. First, a successful login. If we enter the correct password, we're transferred to the main screen. I can log out from here and return to the login screen. So what happens if I don't enter the correct password? I'm presented with an alert. In 2017, Apple improved their local authentication framework to support biometric authentication with either Touch ID or Face ID. We want to add this as an option to our app so that we can give our users a choice as to how they want to log in. Do they want to use their email and password, or use Touch or Face recognition to log in to the server using securely stored credentials? Before we look at securely storing the credentials in the keychain, let's first implement biometric authentication. Well, this is going to be part of the authentication process, so we'll add that code to our authentication class. First, we'll need to import the local authentication framework. To track whether or not we're authorized or not, I'm going to add another publish boolean property to the class called isAuthorized and initialize it as false. Now, in order to provide access to Face ID authentication, we have to add a new property to the info.p list. So go to your info.p list and add a new key. Look for Privacy Face ID Uses Description and enter some text that will be presented to the user when they first try to use Face ID, such as Allow Face ID to Access Stored Credentials. Now, the first time someone tries to use Face ID, they'll be asked to give that permission. If they deny it, they'll not be able to use it until they go to their settings and turn it on. Some users do this by mistake, so we'd better guide them. I'm going to treat this like an error. So I'm going to add a new case to my authentication error enum, and I'll call it Denied Access. Let me copy the description from the previous one, change it to denied access, and I'll change the string to something like this. The other errors you might get are that the user has not yet added a fingerprint or face imprint to the device. In that case, we can consider those both errors as well. So let's create two more cases, one for each. No face ID enrolled, no fingerprint enrolled. 
and we have to provide error descriptions for both of these as well. Now for any other error that I haven't taken care of, I'll create a generic biometric error and a corresponding error description. Let's correct any typos now too. Now before we create some functions, let's first create an enum that will let us know whether or not we're using a device that supports touch, face, or no biometric authentication. So let's create that enum and we'll call it biometric type. And it'll have three cases, none, touch, and face. Now we'll create a function that will return one of these types. So I'll call the function biometric type, returning biometric type. Within the body of that function, we need to create an instance of LA context. Let's check out the documentation for what is available to us as properties and functions for this instance. Right off the bat, I see that there's a property called biometry type. And let's drill down and further. And we see that it's an enum that are none, face ID, and touch ID. So we'll be able to use this to map the corresponding ones to our biometric type enum. The other thing we'll need to do is to check whether or not our device can evaluate the policy, which is this function here. So back in our function, we'll first need to call that can evaluate policy function, passing in the case device owner authentication with biometrics and with an error of nil. Now this returns a Boolean value that we're just going to ignore. Now let's perform a switch on auth context.biometry type and let Xcode fill in the cases. As I said, we'll match these cases up with the cases in our enum. And we can also set the default to none as well. We can use that information back in our login view now to present a button of the case is not none and choose an appropriate image based on whether or not it's a touch ID or face ID enabled device. In the VStack below the last login button, we can check to see if our authentication.biometric type function returns none. If it doesn't, we can create a button. I'll leave the action empty for now. So for the label, I'm going to use an image that uses a system name, which is an SF symbol. So that will be face ID if the type is dot face and touch ID if the type is touch ID. I'll make it resizable and set a frame of a width of 50 and a height of 50. Now my preview is not working here because I have to provide it with the environment object. So let's do that. I guess I'd better fix this typo too. Now, when I refresh the preview, I'm seeing that face ID image for my iPhone 12 Pro Max. Let me switch to an iPhone 8 Plus. The image switches to a fingerprint. And if I switch to an iPod Touch, seventh generation, no button is presented. Let's switch back to the iPhone 12 Pro Max and finish up our class functions.
we need one function and that's going to be called request biometric unlock and it's going to have an escaping completion handler where the result will either provide the credentials for logging in or some kind of error and that will be our authentication error. Now until we start retrieving stored credentials which we will do in the second part of this video let's create a property called credentials and we can have it either have two different possibilities. The credentials we get from our keychain will either be an instance of credentials or they won't exist at all because the user has yet to store the credentials. So in the first case, let's just say our credentials is equal to credentials with some random email, but the password we're going to set to be password. So we'll get an authorized correct authentication. The second option will be if the credentials are nil. Now let's comment out the first assignment now and see how we would deal with the case that we have not yet saved the credentials to the keychain. Again, I'll consider this an error, so I'm going to create one more case for our authentication error enum, and I'm going to call it credentials not saved. And of course, I have to create a corresponding error description. Now this is eventually going to trigger an alert that will ask the user if they want to save them. So in my description, I'll have to make sure that it reflects that question. Now we can use a guard statement to check if it's nil, and if it is, we'll call our completion handler issuing a failure using the credentials not saved error type, and then return from the function. Now, if the credentials are saved, we'll need to do some other checks, and that will require access to the LA context. So let's create an instance of that now. What we can do is call the context can evaluate policy with device owner authentication with biometrics again, but this time we want to know whether or not it's successful. So we assign it to a property called can evaluate and there may be an error, so we want to check on. Well, this is an optional NS error that we can pass into the function, so let's create an optional property for that. And since our function is an NS error pointer, I can use and error as an in out property so that it'll get updated if there is an error. So let's check to see if there are errors. Now, there are only two that I'm concerned with here, and that's whether or not we have been denied access. And if that's the case, the error code will be a minus six. And the second error will be if we have yet to register a fingerprint or face impression. So with that in the if let block, we can switch on error code. If case equals minus six, we'll call our completion handler with a failure using the denied access. If the case is negative seven, which means that we haven't enrolled or registered our fingerprint or face ID, we can determine if the biometry type is face ID, and if so, complete with a failure using no face ID enrolled. Else, we'll complete with an error of no fingerprint enrolled. And then for the default case, we have a completion using the generic biometric error case and then we'll return. Well, now that we've covered all of these cases, we can check the fact that if we can evaluate and the biometry type is not none, we can call the context evaluate policy method. We'll add a localized reason of need to access credentials and then hit enter on the closure. The closure provides a boolean and an error. We will call these success and error. Now this is all happening on the background queue, so we'll want to switch back to the main queue, and if the error is not nil, complete with the generic biometric error, else we can complete and pass back successfully the credentials. 
which in our case is the one with the correct password. You might want to read through this code once more because this will determine our flow. When we retrieve eventually our credentials from the storage and assign them to the credentials property, they will either exist or they will not. Right now, I don't care if they're valid. My login function determines that. All I want to know is whether or not I can pass these credentials back to the login function to attempt a login. If they're nail, meaning they haven't been stored, we fail. If I get an error type to use the biometric access, I might get, if I get an error trying to use biometric access, I might get an error if I denied access or if I've not yet set up a fingerprint or face recognition. So we'll fail here too. Now, if I get this far, I let the device take over and see if it can recognize my face or fingerprint. If there's an error doing that, we fail again. It's only if it makes this far and recognizes my finger or face that I can complete successfully and pass on the credentials. Back in login view, we can now code the action for our button. In this case, we'll call that function that we just created, and it provides us with a closure with a result that will either be a success with credentials or an error with the error type. Let's switch on the result where we'll get a success with credentials or the case of a failure with an error. In the case of success, we'll assign the received credentials to the view model's credentials property. This will then update our form so that we'll now be able to call the view model's login function and in the closure, update the validation with the success state as we did in the original login. If there's an error, we just assign that error to the view model's error property and that will trigger an alert. Now there's one more thing that we have to do in our alert method down at the bottom of this view. We want to be able to have two different kinds of alerts. The normal one with the default OK button and the second one for the case where we try to access credentials that have not yet been saved. So in this case, we're asking the user if they want to save credentials on the next successful login. So in the alert, let's check for that. If it's that kind of error, we can present an alert with a cancel and an action button. The title will be credentials not saved. And the message will be the text view using the errors localized description. For the primary button, I'll use a default button with text OK and an action that I'll complete in a minute. For the secondary button, we'll just use a cancel button. Time to test. Let's first test the case where our credentials have been stored. So make sure that back in the authentication class that you've commented out the nil option and uncommented the non-nil credentials. So let's run. On the first run, you're told that you have not registered any Face ID yet. On an iPhone 8 or earlier, it would say fingerprint. In the simulator, we do that by going to the Features and selecting Enrolled. On the next attempt, you're asked to give permission. I'm going to say Don't Allow. So the next time I tap on that button, I'm told that I have denied access and I'm told that I have to go to the Settings app and turn this on for the app. So let's do that. All right, let's try again. This time we are presented with a prompt for Face ID. So let's give it a bad face. And we do that through the Simulator's Features menu. An unmatching face. And we get an alert telling us that. All right, so let's finally tap and choose a valid face ID. And this time I get logged in.
So stop running the app and let's go back and test the credentials that were nil. This time when you run, you're told you have not saved your credentials and it's asking you if you want to have them saved after the next successful login. When you tap on OK, it'll take you back to the login screen. So the final step in this process now is to save those credentials and then load them back and use them after a successful face or fingerprint recognition. Let me fix that typo here now. That's really bugging me from the first video. We want to be able to save our credentials in a safe and secure manner so that only somebody who has a successful biometric authentication can retrieve those credentials and use them to log into your backend and get access to your full app. User defaults is not a location for that. If you're storing sensitive data in user defaults, then you're risking your application's information. User defaults get stored simply as a property list file that is located inside the preferences folder of the app. They get saved in your app without being encrypted in any form. And there are third-party Mac applications that will, without even having to jailbreak your device, easily view user data for the app downloaded from the App Store. A safer place to store your sensitive information like this, app's credentials, is in the Keychain. The Keychain Services API helps you solve these problems by giving your app a way to store a small amount of user data in an encrypted database called the Keychain. In the Keychain, you are free to save passwords and other secrets that the user explicitly cares about, such as a credit card information or even short sensitive notes. The Keychain API can be quite complicated and unlike user defaults, storing and retrieving data from your Keychain requires a fair amount of work. Fortunately though, developers much smarter than me have created Swift packages that will allow us to easily retrieve and store data in the Keychain. If you're really interested in creating your own wrapper for the Keychain, I recommend that you read this tutorial by Ray Winderlich. You can use whatever you build here in your own app, but unfortunately I don't have the rights to use this in my code for the video, so I'm going to suggest that you use a Swift package by Jason Rental. Paul Hudson of Hacking with Swift uses this in his tutorials, so if it's good enough for him, it certainly is for me too. Now we can add this package to our project using Swift Package Manager. So we'll select File, Swift Packages, add Swift Package Dependency, and type or paste in the GitHub URL into the search field, and then click on Next. Click on Next again, then Finish. That's it. Swift Package Manager is so easy to deal with. Well, now that we have it, we want to be able to use it. We want to do this to be able to save our credentials to the keychain as a JSON string. So to do this, I'm going to create two functions in our credential struct. It's already marked as codable, so we can create our functions here. One will be an instance function to encode the data, and the other will be a static class function to decode. First, the instance function. We'll call it encoded and it will return a string. Next, we can create an instance of JSON encoder. Then we can try to encode our instance and assign it to a constant credential data. Then we'll return the string representation of that data using UTF-8 encoding. For the decoding static function, we'll pass in our credential string that we'll get from our keychain and return a credentials instance. So we can create an instance of JSON decoder, then assign the data representation of our string to a constant JSON data. And then finally, we try to return the decoded data from that JSON data. Notice that I'm forced unwrapping here in both cases but I feel it's pretty safe because I'm in complete control of the data here. Well, now that we have our two functions, we can utilize our new keychain wrapper. In order to access our keychain and to be able to retrieve and store properties, I'm going to create a new class for this. 
I'll create a new file called Keychain Storage. And inside that file, I'll create an enum of the same name. And I'll also import Swift Keychain Wrapper. Now we're going to use this enum as a namespace for some static functions. The first thing I want to do is create a static property and assign it the string value credentials. The Swift Keychain Wrapper package works much like user defaults in that you set a value for a key and retrieve data for that key so that we want to avoid any typos by creating a constant value for this. Our first function is going to be called getCredentials and it will return the credential stored. We can retrieve the value of a string stored in a keychain key by using the keychain wrapper standard string function for the specified key. And we'll use that static credentials decode function to decode the string and return the credentials decoded. If it doesn't exist, we'll return nil. So of course that means we need to make our return credentials optional. We'll also create a save credentials function that will have a credentials argument and return a Boolean value if it's able to successfully save it. And we'll use the credentials instance function we created to encode it. So if keychain wrapper dot standard set credentials encoded for key self dot key, we can return true, else we'll return false. We'll return to the authentication class and in the request biometric unlock function, we'll replace our testing assignment of the credentials property with a call to the get credentials function. So remember credentials now will either be nil or it will have successfully retrieved. Now remember that one of our alerts had that extra action that asked if we wanted to store our credentials after the next valid login. And we haven't coded that yet. So in login view model, we'll create a new published property called store credentials next and set it initially to false. Then in the login function where you get a successful login, you can check to see if that property is true. If it is, you can store the credentials to the keychain before calling the completion function. And if that is successful, we can set the store credentials next property back to false. In login view then, in the alert function, in our default button, we can set it equal to true. That's it. So let's test. Let's run this in the simulator. The first tap gives me that alert that our credentials have not been saved. So tap OK. Now we can log in with valid credentials. Log out. Let's try the biometric authentication again. And I'll give it a valid face. And I'm in. Perfect. I think we have a pretty nice procedural flow here with great feedback to the user and a secure way of storing credentials and providing biometric authentication along with the old email password way. Thanks for watching.